On this episode of Pedal Box, we're in LA and we're driving to Tucson for Roadkill Zip Tie Drags. And it's his birthday. Yay! We landed at LAX pretty late the night before the cruise, so we headed to our hotels in Irwindale near the speedway. After one standard American sized breakfast the next morning, we headed over to meet the cruisers and have a wander around the car park. We found Freiburger and Finnegan in Vanishing Paint, the 1970 Dodge Challenger, and Lucky Costa with his 1966 Pro Touring Chevelle. We didn't have a whole ton of time left before the convoy was due to leave, so we shot the breeze with some of the locals, figured out a lunch plan, and hit the road. Coffee and donuts in hand, we rolled out near the back of the convoy, which promptly got spread out going through the LA morning traffic. We regrouped with a few people en route to Blythe, which is where the Maserati was famously stolen off a trailer outside a hotel after filming Roadkill. The cruise through the mountains was pretty relaxed, but when the traffic cleared we pushed on to catch up and see more of the convoy, with Jacob in the green hornet setting the pace. As it happens, we ended up ahead of everyone, as Mike and Dave in vanishing paint were stopping almost every chance they got. Turns out they were only getting 170 miles to a tank, so we probably sailed right past them while they were refuelling somewhere along the I-10. Well, we're here in uh, Blythe. Blythe. Um, Blythe on the edge of California. We've just stopped for lunch, so we're going to have a bit of a wander around the car park, see who's here, see what cars are around, and have a bit of a nose at what people have built. Now, because we'd been booking it pretty quick, we got to Rebel Barbecue and were done eating just as Vanishing Paint and this flat black Mustang with these crazy hood hinges arrived, which we'll get to later. Unfortunately, that did mean that while we wandered around the car park looking around, everyone else was inside eating their own barbecue. We've had a bit of a wander around now. There's this pretty cool Ford Galaxy behind us. Or at least I think it's a Galaxy, tell us if we're wrong. Uh, unfortunately, the owner's not around to talk to about it, so we can't really get much on that. But there are a couple of quite cool looking Camaros over the other side of the car park. Yeah, the uh, blue one, we were chatting to the owner about it, and he's had it for just over 40 years, and he traded a motorbike for it way, way back. Good deal. Uh, and it's still the original paintwork, and the silver one is still on its original vinyl top as well, but it's been repainted at some point, this kind of flat metallic grey rather than the silver that it originally was. So we'll get back on the road and uh, catch up. Once we were all done with lunch, we jumped the state line into Arizona, about a mile down the road. We tanked up, enjoying the dollar a gallon saving versus California, before enjoying a nice relaxing second leg of the road trip. Everyone rolled out from lunch at different times, so there wasn't really a convoy very much. Kind of left us free to just, you know, cruise gently the whole way to Tucson. We got to Tucson Dragway and into the show. There were some really nice looking cars from all over the US, covering just about every era and style around. There were jacked up gasses and old school hot rods, as well as some really clean looking street machines, like the Z28 we saw at Blythe. Steve, the owner, has put a huge amount of time and effort into the guts of this over the years. There were plenty of ongoing projects and time capsules as well, and some great hoopty workmanship, like this pickup with a butchered front clip and a C-clamp in place of a header stud that had been like that for nearly 20 years. But nothing was as hoopty as this. <laughs> Jeep started out as a 66 CJ5 and a 84 Lincoln Continental Mark VI convertible, and uh, I scrapped the Lincoln body for, I think I got $16 for the scrap metal, and then uh, went ahead and set the Jeep on there, shortened it up about 30 inches, and then after going back and forth and working on it, because I built it in the parking lot at work in about 24 days. And uh, I fashioned a little thing on the front that's not here, but it attached with those bolts so I could drag it around with the forklift. And that's why I welded the uh, lower control arms to the, to the frame rail, because dragging it around, they always kept dripping all the way down with no suspension on it. Now that little Jeep was pretty roadkill, maybe even the most roadkill thing at the whole show, but there was a bunch of other really nice custom machinery here. Now this champion here has Frankenstein a charge cooler into a second blower housing to help keep the Hemi cool in his 300C. And the best part is, this is a roadkill event, so basically everything you see here can race. Except the Jeep. Roadkill guys were running some of their cars too. Not always for best ET, with the muscle truck and general mayhem here giving us the biggest burnout of the weekend. 
And remember that matte black Mustang with the nine inch rear axle on the bootleg and the funky bonnet hinges? Well, here it is. What's up guys, my name is Matt. I am the Imperial Beach Dad, and I'm gonna tell you guys a quick story about the Punish thing. Uh, it actually starts two and a half years ago, and it's kind of a sad start to the story. Uh, I woke up on the floor, uh, my kids found me, it turned out I'd had a seizure. I have an inoperable brain tumor, that was after they operated on that one. Uh, but I've got this big wake up call in my life. It's like, dude, like I'm terminal. So I wanna make a difference, I wanna make memories, and I wanna make friends. And uh, that started my thing called Bucket List Living, where I just try to go on these adventures with my kids and make some memories. The first one we did was the Zip Tie Drags right here in Tucson, Arizona. I got pulled out of a hat to race against the Dragoir, 700 horsepower, basically blown Chevy small block uh, Jaguar. And uh, I lost terribly, but it got gave me the bug, right? And so I've been making friends ever since. You're waiting to go through. This is Cassidy. I've been friends with her uh, at the $3,000 Hoopty Challenge. This is Mad Scientist Garage. I made friends with him on the internet, and we just did a... This guy won the Award of Excellence at the Hot Rod in and out 70th anniversary with a car that we bought the day before, before you bought it for a thousand bucks two days before. And it didn't run. Yeah, we fixed it in the driveway. I painted it. You can see the Imperial Beach Dad art on it. It's, yeah, it was nuts. The thing's awesome. With Vlad. So we just did that. So you just make friends, right? You come to stuff, you're cool, and you grow your car fam. And I just, I met this guy. He's now adopted into the car fam, or I'm into his probably. Awesome. So made friends with the guys from the $3,000 Hoopty Challenge. We had had lunch. I was rescuing a bus that I bought in Texas and driving it 2,000 miles, and they wanted to have lunch. We did, and they were like, hey, so I, we saw you wanted to do some work on the car at Zip Tie Drags. How do you feel about LS motors? To which I replied, I like to party. And here we are. They made a big list and figured out every part we would need to put a Chevy motor out of a giant Suburban into a tiny little Mustang from the 60s. So uh, we made it work, and these guys are legends for doing it. I mean, Amos, he's been fabricating, and they, they were in the junkyard pulling parts for days to, to do this. And uh, we're super stoked, man, and we're going to run it down the drag strip today. Okay. Should be putting out like close to 300 horsepower, 340 pound feet of torque, just kind of stock like this. So. Pretty stoked, and we're picking up. Up. Lots of sponsors, lots of people are helping us make this possible. Napa donated all the fluids that we needed. Um, we had these really cool gloves. Uh, yeah, they're red. Those are Venom Steel gloves. They're invincible. We've got, yep, grip lock ties, which are the coolest zip ties ever. They're, they almost feel like they're made out of metal, but they're plastic and they got a tab you can undo and like rubber that holds on to anything. And we just picked up Crower cams. They're going to be custom building us a cam for this motor. In the end, after a heroic 26 hours wrenching in the car park, even after the floodlights went out, Matt and his buddies got the LS in the Mustang and got it running. Minutes after finishing, he was staging next to Buick Roadmaster here to break in the new motor. Even popping a tyre just after launch, he managed to pull two full seconds off his previous best time with the old 289 Ford motor, posting 17.8 at just under 88 mile an hour. It really was incredible that so many people came together to make it happen, and the fact they pulled it off in 26 hours is still somewhat mind-blowing. But that's really what this community is all about. Everybody helps everybody to try and do something incredible. And one of the other benefits of going to America is I can bring back parts for my American car. And I managed to make really good use of that. I got all of these parts back in various people's luggage, including two of these massive drums, which are about 10 kilos each, which is ridiculous, but brilliant. They fit, all was well. I got a master cylinder, full set of shoes, new slave cylinders, pipes, window seals, rebuild kits, front caliper seals, which are in here, some tools, and I even managed to find, thanks to a friend, cheers Gav, uh, a almost pristine 66 Thunderbird manual, which has wiring diagrams and brake diagrams all the way through it. It is fantastic. So yeah, all in all, it was a good trip. And hopefully we'll get these on in the next couple of episodes of uh, Pedalbox. Well, that pretty much wraps up our trip to America for Roadkill Zip Tie Drags 2019. It was a cracking event, uh, we met some really cool people, and we got to look at some quite nifty projects. Yeah, I still can't quite believe that that Jeep is fully road legal. Like, yeah. that thing is just wrong on so many levels. I would love to bring it to the UK and put it in for an IVA and uh, just watch them weep. That would be great, but I don't think that's going to happen. Not, not this year. Not no. this side of hell freezing over. Oh, no. We should probably get back to working on this. We've got suspension to put in because there is nothing here. But we have found parts for it, which is fun. So yeah, we'll uh, get back onto this and bring you another episode 
soon? Soon. Soon. Yeah. Soon. Soon, baby.